Dear learners, welcome to the course Antennas and Microwave Engineering. In this video, I will explain various types of antenna arrays. Why we go for antenna arrays? The field radiated by a small linear antenna is not distributed uniformly in the direction perpendicular to the axis of the antenna. As in the case of the short dipole, the maximum radiation takes place in the direction right angles to the axis of the dipole. So the non-uniform radiation characteristics may be used for many broadcast services. But such characteristics are not preferred a point-to-point -point communication. In the point-to-point -point communication, it is desired to have most of the energy radiated in one particular direction. That means it is desired to have greater directivity in a desired direction, particularly which is not possible with single dipole element. Hence, to increase the field strength in the desired direction by using group of antenna excited simultaneously. Such a group of antennas is called array of antennas or simply antenna array. This antenna array can be defined as a system of similar antennas directed to get record high directivity in the desired direction. In general, antenna array is the radiating system in which several antennas are spaced properly so as to get greater field strength at a far distance from the radiating system by combining radiations at point from all the elements in the system. In general, the total field produced by the antenna array at a far distance is the vector sum of the field produced by the individual antennas of the array. The individual element is generally called the element of an antenna array. The antenna array is said to be linear if the elements of the array are equally spaced along a straight line. The linear antenna array is said to be uniform linear array if all the elements are fed with a current of equal amplitude with progressive uniform phase shift along the line. In general, the elements in the antenna array is a lambda by 2 dipole, that is half wave dipole. The length of half wave dipole may not be equal to electrical wavelength. If the variation of the electrical length from half wave is within 5 percentage, then it is assumed that the radiation properties of individual elements are not affected. Practically, various forms of the antenna array are used as radiating systems. Some of the practically used forms of antenna arrays are listed here. Broadside array, empire array, collinear array and parasitic array. We are going to discuss about one by one. First most important and simple form of array is broadside array. Broadside array is the array of antenna in which all elements are placed parallel to each other and the direction of maximum radiation is always perpendicular to the plane consisting elements. This is the arrangement of a broadside array. Here our elements are equally spaced. These are antenna elements. A0, A1, A2, A3, A4 equally spaced at a distance of D. And this is the uh, antenna array axis. That is axis of antenna array. And this is the direction of maximum radiation. This is the direction of maximum radiation which is perpendicular to the array axis. This is the radiation burden of an antenna. You observe here, this is the, the direction of 
axis of antenna array and this is the direction of maximum radiation. So in the broadside array, maximum radiation occurs in the direction perpendicular to the antenna array axis. Here all the elements are fed with the current with equal magnitude and same phase. The maximum radiation is directed in broadside direction that is in the perpendicular to the line of axis of array. The radiation pattern for the broadside array is bidirectional. So from this uh, figure we observe that radiation pattern of broadside array is bidirectional. Thus, we can define broadside array as the arrangement of antennas in which maximum radiation is in the direction perpendicular to the axis of array and plane containing the elements of array. Another form of antenna array is n fire array. The n fire array is very much similar to the broadside array from the point of view of arrangement. But the main difference is in the direction of maximum radiation in broadside array. The direction of maximum radiation is perpendicular to the axis of array, while in the n fire array, the direction of the maximum radiation is along the axis of array. Thus, in the n fire array, number of identical antennas are spaced equally along a line. All the antennas are fed individually with the currents of equal magnitude, but their phases vary progressively along the line to get entire arrangement unidirectional finally. Maximum radiation along the axis of array. Thus, the entire array can be defined as the array with the direction of maximum radiation along the direction of the axis of array to get unidirectional radiation. So this figure illustrates the arrangement of the entire array. The antenna elements are equally spaced. This it is similar to the broadside array. So this is the direction of antenna array axis and also the direction of maximum radiation. So here in the entire array, the direction of maximum radiation is along the direction of the antenna array axis. This is the difference between the broadside array and the entire array. This figure it illustrates the front view of the entire array. This is the radiation pattern of entire array. Maximum radi radiation is along the this direction. Next type of array is collinear array. As the name implies that the collinear array, the antennas are arranged coaxially. That is, the antennas are arranged end to end along a single line. The individual elements in the collinear array are fed with the currents equal in magnitude and phase. This condition is similar to broadside array. In collinear array, the direction of maximum radiation is perpendicular to the axis of array. There are two types of arrangements in collinear array. Vertical collinear array, horizontal collinear array. In the vertical collinear array, so in this arrangement in the vertical uh, collinear array, all the antenna elements are vertically uh, placed. One end of the antenna element is attached to the another uh, end. So it is coaxially uh, placed. Into antenna elements are connected end to end. Here, this horizontally placed antenna elements are horizontally placed. This arrangement is called the horizontal collinear array. This figure it illustrates the radiation pattern of a collinear array. 
So the radiation pattern of the collinear array and the broadside array is very much similar, but the radiation pattern of the collinear array has circular symmetry with the main lobe perpendicular everywhere to the principal axis. Thus, the collinear array is also called omnidirectional array or broadside array. The gain of collinear array is maximum if the spacing between the elements is the order of 0.3 lambda to 0.5 lambda. But the small spacing introduced to constructional and the feeding problems. To overcome this difficulty, the elements of the array are operated with their ends very close to each other by connecting ends by an insulator. The power gain of the collinear array does not increase in proportion with the number of elements. Collinear array with more than 4 elements is not practically used as power gain is not sufficient. But practically 2 element collinear array is used as it allows multiband operation. It is generally known as 2 half waves in phase. These two figures illustrate the real time example of collinear array, vertical arrangement and horizontal arrangement of collinear array. Another form of antenna array is parasitic array. Yaguda array is the best example for the parasitic array. So, in order to overcome feeding problems of the antenna, sometimes the antennas of the array are fed through the radiation from the nearby elements. The array of antennas in which the parasitic elements get the power through electromagnetic coupling with the driven element which is in proximity with the parasitic element is known as parasitic array. The simplest form of the parasitic array consists of one driven element and one parasitic element. In multi-element parasitic array, there may be one or more driving elements and also one or more parasitic elements. So, in general, the multi-element parasitic array is the array with at least one driven element and one or more parasitic elements. The common example of parasitic array with the linear half wave dipoles as the elements of array is Yahida array or simply Yagi antenna. The amplitude and the phase of the current induced by in the parasitic element depends on the spacing between the driven element and the parasitic element. So in the parasitic array, the all antenna elements are electromagnetically coupled. It consists of only one driven element. It is reflector and director. This is the radiation pattern of uh, Yagida array. It is a directional pattern in its particular direction. Maximum radiation occurs. Field strength is more in a specific direction. These are some of the advantages of antenna arrays. The main advantage is used to increase the signal strength and also higher activity is increased and uh, minor loops are reduced. High signal to noise ratios are achieved uh, uh, with the help of antenna arrays and also high gain is obtained. Antenna arrays helps to reduce the power wastage and also it provides a better performance. These are the advantages of antenna arrays. One of the major uh, disadvantages of antenna arrays is it it occupies uh, more space. That is the major uh, disadvantage. And mounting and maintenance is also difficult. And uh, resistive losses are increased due to the more number of elements used in the radiating system. Applications of antenna arrays are generally used in satellite communication, wireless communication, and also used in military radar communications. Antenna arrays are generally used in the astronomical study. I hope you would understand the types of antenna arrays. Thank you.